2002 Civic here. I'm going to be doing an alignment on it, a little bit of pre-checks to it. Uh, past couple videos, we're doing a suspension rebuild and a pullover and camber kit install. We've got a tarp on the rack here. I'm not going to go too much into the setup here. It's just going to vary depending on the equipment you're using. But we've got the uh, sensors mounted on the wheels. Um, we've got the system calibrated and we're putting the uh, brake lock on. So uh, after we do this, we'll do a camber sweep uh, correction, caster sweep. Then we'll look at our measurements, uh, see what the car is at currently, and go from there on it and uh, see what we need to do to get everything with inspect. Our current measurements. Um, we're going to start the rear. We've got to start the rear on a four wheel alignment. So, as you can see, the uh, our negative camber in the rear is like negative 3.9, right? Negative 4. So, factory spec is, I think, uh, uh, around negative 1, probably, um, with uh, probably a 1 degree or half a degree range uh, either direction. But um, we're going to get it down to about negative 1. We're close to it. I've already rolled the rear fenders because we heard we're having some clearance issues there. This car did not come with a factory camber adjustment in the rear, so we added some adjustable upper control arms. So um, it's kind of hard to see just through to the uh, uh, the clearance here. But what I'm doing is I'm loosening up the two jam nuts on the arm, and then we'll be able to turn the adjustment on the arm that'll either lengthen. Or shorten the arm. In this case, we're going to lengthen it, and that's going to push our the top of our spindle further from the chassis and uh, stand our wheels up. As you can see here, we're uh, loosening the jam nuts and turning the adjustment, and uh, hope to be able to get everything with spec here. These particular arms have quite a bit of adjustment on them, so shouldn't have any problem uh, getting it where we need to. And after this, we will move to the toe adjustment. Okay, so now we're jumping into our toe adjustment. Pretty easy to adjust on this car. It's just uh, got a little bit of clearance issues between the adjustment and the uh, the rack here. But it's got a jam nut and you got an adjustment nut. Turn it to get it for the inspect. Um, some particular cars, if you're doing a camber and a toe adjustment, depending on the suspension design, sometimes you have to kind of find a balance between one or the other. Um, sometimes you won't have enough adjustment either way to get them both in spec. If you have to pick, always get your toe squared away first, then get your camber as good as you can. This particular one, we had enough adjustment um, on uh, both measurements to be able to get everything squared away. Um, as far as the rear suspension goes, your toe is going to be critical for getting tire wear, uh, reasonable tire wear. If, you, if your toe's off in the rear, um, a lot of times it won't really affect drivability too much if if there's an extreme case you can have um uh, maybe some kind of dartiness or a little bit of wandering but for the most part uh it's just going to be a more of a tire wear issue if your toes off and if your toes off say uh out one side and, and um in the other side you can have what you call like a dog walking effect where the rear end kind of uh if you're looking at the car from the rear going down the road, it looks like the rear is kind of the car is going kind of sideways down the road, so you can get that. But generally, your toe in the rear, and unless you got an extreme example, um, most are just going to be going to cause tire wear issues. Your camber in the rear, again, in the rear is uh, generally just going to cause uh, tire wear issues. Let's talk about, while we're talking about toe and camber and everything, let's talk about the front suspension, even though we're still back here at the back. But on the front, if your toe's out of spec, uh, the main thing you're going to get is tire wear. Again, you can kind of get some dartiness wandering if you've got an extreme case where your toe is extremely off. 
camber in the front if you've got the camber issues again you're gonna you can get some tire wear but uh you can have some drivability issues with camber and caster in the front and where that's kind of coming to play if they're both off say if uh if your left and right are off say you got negative camber let's say you got negative two degrees in the front but it's the same on the left and right side you're not really going to get any drivability issues as long as it's the same left or right you're just going to get um, tire wear on the inner part of the tires they're going to wear faster than the rest now let's say you've got if the way you run the trouble is if it's different from the left and right it's what you call cross caster or cross camber and or cross caster depending on which one you're talking about so if i've got negative two degrees on the left and i've got you know perfect zero on the right hand side the car is going to want to pull to the right really severely same way with caster if it's left and right are the same generally it's going to go straight if one side is extremely low extremely high then you're going to have a pull issue generally uh trucks will have on the front end will have tow camber and caster adjustments generally your passenger cars only have a tow adjustment some will have a small amount of camber adjustment from the factory and almost all i say almost all passenger cars do not have an adjustable uh, a caster adjustment depending on the suspension design um sometimes there is some aftermarket kits where you can get that will allow you to add caster or adjust caster and um most all cars have a uh some type of aftermarket uh parts available to adjust your camber like this car for example now on the front of this car we did have to put in the camber kit and they've also been adjustable bolts in the struts and when i put the car together i just eyeballed it i went ahead and torqued everything down and once i got the car on the uh the measurements um once i got the car on the machine here and got the measurements it was actually exactly where i wanted it so we in this video we did not have to go in and readjust the front camber but i'm going to add in a uh a little video here of when I put the car together um, showing the adjustment kit and um, showing how you would actually go in there and just and adjust it when need be so looking at the rear here our camber is where we want it so is where we want everything leveled in uh, spec looking at the front our camber is perfect caster is perfect our left or right cross camber and caster is perfect so when I went to adjust my toe I actually ran out of thread with the amount of uh, drop I got on this car and where I adjusted the camber, there was, when I went to adjust the toe, there was, I completely ran out of thread in the tie rod. So I actually had to come back on another day. So this was actually, this video spanned two days and I had to replace our outer tie rods with some extended ones. As you can see here, these the silver outers are actually extended outer tie rods. And I actually had to modify those a little bit to get the correct length. Um, so I had enough thread insertion and enough adjustment. So the way these are mounted are really, really high up tie rods here. It's kind of hard to get to. It makes it even harder when you got this camera and try not to block it. But bust and loose our jam nut. We're going to rotate our inner until we get the uh, toe dialed in where we want it. Here's our adjustment screen, and you can see it just uh, goes right into spec exactly where we want it. We've got it pretty well, um, perfectly zeroed out on this side. We're going to tighten up our jam nut. We'll move over to the driver side, uh, do the same, and after that, we will be done. Um, everything was will be completely in spec on this car, so the car should drive fine, and uh, we should get reasonable tire wear out of it. As I was talking about earlier in the video, um, we did add a front camber kit to this car. I'm just going to show you uh, what it consists of here. This is our front strut when we're putting the car together. And all we did was just, you remove the stock upper 
um, strut bolt with an adjustable one. This is an elliptical shaped bolt and it has a washer on it and you depending on how you orient the washer and how you um, as you rot rotate the bolt it will allow you to add camber or subtract camber. Once you do that you snug it up, torque it down and then you're good to go. Alright so before we go I just wanted to touch on some of the terminology that I was using in the video for the ones that may not be familiar. So I just found a simple illustration online. So let's look at the right hand side of this image uh, starting at the top. It's going over a camber and say a uh, view from looking at the front of the vehicle. So negative camber shows that uh, if looking at the front of the vehicle that the tires will be leaning in and uh, again that'll cause inside tire wear. And positive camber is where the top of the tires lean out. Uh, when looking at the front of the vehicle, and obviously that'll cause uh, the outside tires to wear. Um, going to negative camber in some performance uh, racing applications, uh, a track car, sometimes it is preferable to run a uh, certain amount of negative camber. Uh, but on a street car, it's really just something you're going to be driving the street, it's not really necessary. To you prefer it to be uh, within your stock specs for um, the best street drivability and tire wear. Now let's look at um, our toe. This is our generally our only adjusted measurement. So um, if looking from the top of the vehicle, toe in, be that the fronts of the tires are pointing towards themselves. And toe out, the, the front tires are pointed away from themselves. So, pretty simple to understand there. And your toe is adjusted uh, by um, lengthening or shortening your tie rods. And, like I said, that's their most commonly adjusted um, angle. On some vehicles, the toe is the actually the only angle that can be adjusted from the factory without adding some sort of aftermarket kit. While I'm speaking on toe, I wanted to clarify a common misconception um, that uh, toe can cause a pull condition, which uh, is actually false. Um, for the sake of Oregon, there are, of course, there are always some some instances, but for the sake of Oregon, uh, we're going to say that toe does not cause any type of pull condition. Um, like I said, you can have some drivability uh, issues with tow, like dartiness, wandering, but you should not uh, experience any type of pull. If you've got any type of pull in your vehicle, that's probably going to be um, caused from either cross camber being off, cross caster being off, um, or probably a tire issue, or sometimes it could even be a uh, stick and brake caliper or anything like that but generally toe does not cause uh, any type of pull condition and lastly we'll talk about caster which is probably one of the more difficult to try to explain but i'll look at the illustration here negative caster kind of the um, caster relates to the angle of the steering um so your negative caster uh, it's going to be your steering angle is going to be angled towards the front of the vehicle. Positive caster is going to be towards the rear of the vehicle. You're really not going to find a vehicle with zero caster. Generally, most of your vehicles are going to have some degree of positive caster. And what that does is um, that's what, that when you turn your wheel and you let go of the wheel, it automatically want to center. That's a effect of, of um, positive caster. And again, caster. Uh, if you if your cross caster is off left to right, it can cause a pull condition. Um, as far as tire wear goes, caster, for the sake of argument, doesn't really cause tire wear, except in some really extreme cases. You could see some uh, tire wear long term, but generally it's not a tire wearing angle. So hopefully this video gave you some insight into the alignment process. If you have any questions concerning this vehicle or 
uh, any other particular vehicle or just the process in general, um, leave me a comment and I'll uh, get back to you on that. I've done several thousand vehicles, so I'll probably have the answer to uh, whatever question you might ask. But get us a like if it helps you out and stay tuned for the next video.